This is Dr. G with naturalfoodsdiet.org. This is part two on magnesium. Now let me go over just a couple of examples of the thousands of studies on magnesium. A recent study showed that the intake of magnesium above what is traditionally considered the normal dietary amount had a dramatic effect on improving multiple aspects of memory and learning. Now this was an animal study. These findings held true for both old and young animals. Now in the study, magnesium was found to directly improve synaptic plasticity. Now this is the key for the health of our brain. In fact, it's the lack of this plasticity that we're able to make the connections that causes us to have cognitive decline as we age. Now in this study, various regions in the brain that are associated with learning and memory experience significant improvements in synaptic function as a result of magnesium dietary supplementation. Now here I want to quote the lead author of the study who said, our findings suggest that elevating brain magnesium content via increasing magnesium intake might be a useful new strategy to enhance cognitive abilities. Now he added, over half of the population of industrialized countries have a magnesium deficit, and this increases with aging. Now this may, may very well contribute to age-dependent memory decline. Increasing magnesium intake may prevent or reduce such a decline, end quote. So here we see a role for magnesium for maintaining our brain function as we age. Now I generally recommend supplementing anywhere from 200 to 600 milligrams of an ionizable form of magnesium, and that's just for general health. Now when you take in more than you can absorb, your GI tract will let you know through diarrhea. So if you're getting liquid stools, this is a hint to take less. Now, if you're interested in strategies to help maintain optimal brain function, even higher levels of magnesium intake might be helpful. Now, one possible way to safely supplement more magnesium for a therapeutic effect is topical magnesium in the form of magnesium chloride or bathing in Epsom salts, which is magnesium sulfate. Now back in 1618, a farmer in Epsom, England, tried to get his cows to drink the bitter tasting water from a well. Well, the cows refused, but he noticed that their skin wounds and infections cleared up when they were soaked in the water. And the word of the magical Epsom salts spread as a medical remedy. Now quality Magnesium supplements is important. Low quality forms of magnesium include magnesium oxide. And this is dirt cheap. And I guess technically it is dirt. But it's poorly absorbed. But it's what they use in most of the commercial multivitamin mineral supplements. Now highly absorbable, high quality forms of magnesium include magnesium glycinate and magnesium malate. Now I'll tell you about another study that was done on 3,713 postmenopausal women. And this showed that magnesium has a powerful anti-inflammatory effect. Each 100 milligrams of magnesium per day was associated with a significant reduction in various inflammatory markers. Remember, magnesium is the most lacking mineral in the human diet. And when you consider that inflammation is behind most all health problems, then the consequence of eating a magne magnesium deficient diet becomes obvious. Now this study showed that inflammatory markers such as CRP, that C-reactive protein, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-6 were all reduced when magnesium intake was higher. Now these are common inflammatory markers that are often elevated with diseases of aging. Now further various inflammatory markers 
that are related to the walls of our arteries were also reduced with magnesium. Inflammation of the lining of the arteries is required for plaque formation. Now reducing this inflammation helps protect the arterial health. So having adequate magnesium is critical for reducing the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Which by the way, heart disease is still the leading cause of death and stroke is like three or four. Now, wouldn't it be nice if there were reliable lab tests for telling us if we have sufficient magnesium? Now, the most commonly available test is a serum magnesium level. This test is usually normal and it's not very helpful. The red blood cell magnesium is better, but if you do this test, you want to be at the top end of the normal range because the normal values are derived from a population deficient in magnesium. Now you wanna know something? If our public health officials did nothing other than ensure the population had magnesium sufficiency, instead of all the other worthless things that they do, the health of our nation would be dramatically improved and healthcare costs would be significantly lower and we wouldn't have to spend so much time at funerals and in ICUs. So take a critical look at your lifestyle and your symptoms. Are you getting enough of this precious metal born from the stars? Let me know how you ensure that you have an optimal magnesium intake in the comments section below. This is Dr. G. Thanks so much for watching.